fact is, in plain sight, in the public domain, this president is obstructing justice and he's engaged in a cover-up. And that could be an impeachable offense. The Fox News alert House Speaker Nancy Pelosi not holding back. That was yesterday as the feud between her and President Trump intensifies. It is time for our headliner this morning, Kellyanne Conway. Counselor to the uh, President joins us now. Kellyanne, good morning to you. Hi. So can we start off first with what happened in the White House yesterday? You were there and actually had an exchange of words with the Speaker yourself. I did, and all these ridiculous stories. The president was in a rage, he's fuming, he stormed out, temper tantrum. There was none of that. He actually never raised his voice. He came in, stood at the end of the table in the cabinet room, outside the Oval, and said, look, folks, I want to do infrastructure. I want to do great things for this country. We've been doing great things for this country. But within the last hour, you had a meeting and came out and said, I'm engaged in a cover-up. That's not true. But he took the case directly to Nancy Pelosi because she was the one who came to the mics and said that the president was engaged in a cover-up, which is nonsense. All she had to do was either move her meeting to later in the afternoon with her caucus, where she's under enormous pressure to get on with impeaching the president, which she has said she doesn't want to do right now. Or she could have said, I'm not going to talk to you right now. We're on our way to the White House to work on infrastructure. Let's meet again at 2 or 3 o'clock, and I'll give you a, the rundown of the whole day. But no, they can't resist going out and giving a live running commentary of what her more outrageous uh, liberal hellbent on getting this president out of the White House members are pressuring her to do. So the president said, let's work on infrastructure. And then he left very calmly. And I want to emphasize that because he never raised his voice a single time, was very polite, and said, you can't have two tracks. You can't call, say that I'm engaged in a cover-up. You can't want to impeach and investigate and, not, and then pretend you want to legislate. So get back to me when you're done playing these games, and I'll be ready. Well, let's just back And so then, just, then, just, then, just, then, then Speaker Pelosi, nobody's reported this yet, so I'll give you some color. Then Speaker Pelosi went on and launched into some odd uh, self-curated history of infrastructure in our country. She talked about Thomas Jefferson, then she got to Teddy Roosevelt. And so when she was finished, I said, respectfully, Madam Speaker, would you like to address some of the specifics the president talked about? And she said, I don't, I talk to the president, I don't talk to staff. Because let's face it, she's the sixth most rich member of Congress. She treats everybody like they're her staff. She treats me like I'm either her maid or her driver or her pilot or her makeup artist, and I'm not. Uh, and I said to her, how very pro-woman of you, per usual, because she's not very pro-woman. She's pro-some woman, a few women. Well, let's go through the time frame. It, it was around 10 a.m. Eastern time when she um, leveled the allegation of a cover-up. It was about an hour later we were there at the White House. Were you or the president planning to go to the Rose Garden at 10 a.m., or, or was that spontaneous during the meeting yesterday? The president was planning to have the second meeting on infrastructure. They were first here on April 30th, and he sent a letter to them the night before saying, we'll see you tomorrow. I think we should also discuss the USMCA and get that passed. And then the president put in his letter, it's a public letter, everybody can read it, he said, it's time to reauthorize the 2020 Highway Trust Fund as well, or the, the, the funding for this. So he laid all of that out. We had a very productive, constructive conversation. It was different in tone and content and attitude and altitude, frankly, on April 30th. It was Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, and others who came out to the sticks afterwards and told the whole world this was a great meeting. The president was going to do infrastructure with us. The speaker was asked at the time, here in the driveway, steps away from me, Bill and Sandra, well, how will you investigate him and do impeachment? And she said, well, we didn't talk about investigating him. We didn't talk about impeachment. We came here to talk about infrastructure. So I'm going to throw her own words back at her three weeks later. Where did that go? Why take the spirit and the content of her own words after that hour and a half infrastructure meeting on April 30th and ruin it all yesterday so Kellyanne, what is this? By, by preceding this meeting with that nonsense? But what? I mean, the American people are watching this play out. Yes. They see the impe and they're not impeachment serious. frenzy. They see the president walking out of a meeting with Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer taking to the Rose Garden. They see the rhetoric that is being used in Washington right now. What does this mean about the White House and the president's ability to work with Democrats going forward? How did that change yesterday, or did it? 
it didn't change, but he made very clear that the, their two-track strategy is nonsense. They can choose whether they want to investigate or legislate, and what's more important to them. I know, we all know Speaker Pelosi is under enormous pressure from some folks in the rank and file who are demanding that she get the caucus together and start impeachment proceedings. In fact, she's trying to get them all in line. Hakeem Jeffries also in the leadership. Uh, Steny Hoyer, others in the leadership have said, we're not going in the impeachment track now. And so she's got these mixed messages. She's under enormous pressure to fall in line. They all have one point of view on abortion. They all have one point of view on impeachment. And, and she can't keep her caucus together. She can't control her caucus. And she can't control her temper about the president. And we saw it yesterday. Last, Why not just question. stay in the room? Yeah, Why not just stay in the room this. yesterday and talk to Secretary Mnuchin, talk to Larry Kudlow, get some of the work stream flowing, and then tell it's Chuck Schumer had a 35-point plan, 35-page plan. Leave it there. Let, we have let, email. Let me, just see, let me just put in this. What, Democrats allege that you set a trap for them. To them, you would say what about that yesterday? Well, boy, then they're easier marks than they even seem. Nobody set a trap for them. The president was serious about infrastructure. They ruined it by an hour before that, basically with her car running, waiting for her, saying he's engaged in a cover-up. Uh, then coming over here and pretending everything's great and that we're just going to discuss infrastructure. So look, it was not a trap. The president is serious. They can come back today if they want to talk about infrastructure. But do they really? Is that what's most important? They're not even reading the polls. But I'll tell you, Sandra asked an important question. Where does this leave us? We want the Democrats to respond to the president's immigration plan he put forth last week, crickets. He's doing so much on trade, nothing. He's come forward and talked about drug pricing, another bipartisan issue we can work on together. Where are they on all these things? We, as an administration, are going to keep barreling forward without Congress and doing things administratively if they're not serious about working with us. But look, it's only going to take 20 seats, win back 20 seats, to get control of Congress again. There are 30 or 31 Democrats sitting in congressional districts that Donald Trump won in 2016. And I guarantee you he'll be visiting most, Kelly, of those, really, most of those to talk about the great progress for this country. Really quickly, before we let you go, the Dow is plunging today. It's down 330 points. We know the president watches the stock market closely. A lot of this is concern about trade. You just mentioned trade. What is the ability for the White House to get something done here? Because there seems to be concern about that and about escalating tensions in Washington. Well, the stock market is way up from when the president got elected, and so is optimism, growth rates, unemployment is low. Uh, people are feeling good. Wage growth, very important, is way up. And it's way up among people who only have a high school degree, which is critically important to a president who dignifies all types of work and career choices, including stay-at-home moms. Sandra, here's what's important. This president has the long view. He's playing long ball with trade. But look at how much we're negotiating with China. The USMCA, another point. Congress needs to put that to a vote. That is restructuring and renegotiating actually a bad trade deal that's been that needs to be modernized and updated for the 21st century NAFTA. We have the agreements with Mexico and Canada. We need Congress to do its job now. Pelosi can schedule that vote today. Will she? She can fix immigration today. She can fix Florida. She can fix TVPRA so that we don't have to release okay. young people into our interior never to be seen again. We stop recycling these kids. They have failed to do their job. They're a do nothing. I think Congress trying to do a do-over of the Mueller report because they're so disappointed that Bob Mueller, over $35 million, 22 months, didn't finish the job Hillary couldn't get done, which is keep okay. Donald Trump out of the White House. Our country doesn't work that way. We've got to run. You had a lot to say, Kellyanne Conway. Hope you come back. We're waiting Thank on you. the speaker, Nancy Anytime. Pelosi. You bet. Thanks, She's Phil about and to Sandra.